<laughs> um, I think that's a good segue to welcome in our our guest today, the Newsday Picks columnist Joe Maniello, longtime NFL picks expert, as seen on Newsday and various other publications throughout the country. Now he has an NFL betting guide every week. It's up for week nine on Newsday.com. It'll be up every week to come. Very, very happy we get to talk to you. What's up, Joe? Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Joe Maniello, thanks for joining us. Um, listen, we're on the subject of the Giants and Jets. Obviously, they're the local teams in town. We're a local show. Now, I take it you have your Jets and Giants picks and props up on your Week 9 betting guide. Well, just picks because the, the props weren't released by the time we had to get it in last night. But uh, we can talk about the picks if you want. All right, but yeah, let's start with the Giants. The Jets don't play until Monday night. The Giants play Sunday. Let's start with them. Now, this is an interesting game. You have <laughs> a, a lot, yeah, a lot going on. A lot going on. You got so Antonio up, Pierce, the new head coach. Josh McDaniels has shown the door. Uh, Daniel Jones and uh, Andrew Thomas, Saquon Barkley should all be back this week. But you don't have Leonard Williams no more. Key player on defense traded to Seattle for a second and a fifth. Darren Waller could cont- uh, potentially miss weeks with that hamstring injury. So, what's your feel on this game and how it's going to go? Yeah, as you, I mean, to me, this is the soap opera game of the week. Like you said, the Raiders are a mess. Or their coach, GM, Jimmy G got benched. I actually kind of like the Giants a lot in this game. Uh, it's very rare that the Giants go into a game where they're, they're more, you know, the less dysfunctional team the way this season has gone. But uh, again, Daniel Jones back, that's a surprise. But to me, this is more of an anti-Raiders pick. Um, they've only scored 20 points once all year. They just they got blown out of Chicago. They lost at Detroit by double digits. The team was a mess. Devontae Adams isn't happy. So sometimes teams get a boost from a first game as a coach. You saw it last year with the Colts. Yeah. And uh, ESPN analyst Jeff Saturday getting the win, actually, which is weird. It was against the Raiders, that first win. And then they lost every game after that, the Colts. But I just don't see it. I think the Raiders are not a good team. And the Giants, you know, before the season, I picked them to win in the NFC East, which is obviously a bad pick in oh, hindsight. Man. But I was really uh, – I was just – was really impressed with Brian Dable's first year, and I thought they made nice additions with Darren Waller. But it's just you know that forty nothing loss, and then the offensive line was in shambles. So it's been it's been bad. Two and six, they should have beaten the Jets, but the defense has played great. They've allowed fourteen points, seven points, and thirteen points the last three weeks, and somehow they went one and two in those games. So it just tells you how awful the season has been for the Giants. But I think this is a good matchup. Uh, Saquon Barkley should get his, and Daniel Jones. You know, I think they'll, they'll get the ball out fast because you don't want to. Have uh, your buddy Max Crosby? I heard you guys laughing about him. You don't want him knocking Daniel Jones <laughs> with his neck issues. But um, yeah, I think this is a great matchup for the Giants. The, the Raiders are a mess, so I have the Giants twenty-four, Raiders seventeen. All right, bet there you go. Now, Joe, uh, Newsday picks columnist Joe Maniello once again joining us on Sports Talk. I had a thought today, and I want to know how you feel about it. So obviously, the Giants, who are they're they've been garbage this season. Their point differential is horrible. They're fourth in the 2024 NFL draft order as we sit today. But let's remind everybody they started 7-2 and two last season. We all know they finished 9-7-1. and one, So if you do some quick math, they went 2-5-1 and one in between that start and their finish. But listen, they're 2-6 and six right now. I was curious. They're getting Daniel Jones back, Saquon Barkley, Andrew Thomas, those key players on offense. Seven and two. If they finish seven and two, I'm not saying they will, but if they finish seven and two, that get them to nine and eight. You know, it's a weekend NFC that might get them in the playoffs. And, and you say they're going to win this week. So say they're three and six with a favorable schedule. They have four divisional games left, I believe. They have yeah, the Eagles yeah. twice, which is tough. But I, I, now, now we're starting to throw some doubt into this, but. Giants, other than that, they have a very favorable schedule. So what do you think the likelihood is? Maybe not playoffs, but that they get this turned around to where they finish seven, eight wins. It's funny. The way you started the question, I thought you were going to say, do you think the Giants should tank? But you went the opposite <laughs> way. Um, yeah, yeah. Full surprises. I, mean, I, see, I mean, you know, before the year, I was high on them. But now after half the season, basically, I, I don't see how they, they play the Eagles twice late in the season. I think it's week 16, week 18. They play the Cowboys next week. That's a loss. So even if they beat the Raiders, it's three and seven after 10 games. They probably have to win out, and I don't see it happening. But uh, you know, if they, if, like you said, if they can win, if they can win seven games, I mean, if they go seven and ten. Obviously, from a big picture standpoint, it's a step down. But considering how poorly they started, seven and ten would almost feel like a win, and it would definitely, you know, save 
give Dable another year. But, uh, you know, he won coach of the year, and earlier in the season people were talking about him getting fired. But I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a lost season, but there's definitely some uh, silver linings that they can uh, play well down the stretch. The defense has played great the last three weeks, and, uh, you know, got, you got you to look at all the positives, even though it's been a negative season. Newsday NFL Picks columnist Joe Maniello joining WHPC Sports Talk. So we covered the Giants. Let's get to the Jets. Uh, bad news for Jets fans. Y'all are now the only team in the NFL with zero opening drive points with the Steelers opening drive touchdown yesterday. Uh, this is a case of the stoppable force meeting the movable object. The Jets have the 30th ranked offense. The Chargers have the 31st ranked defense. So if there's any week for the Jets offense to put it all together, for them to actually convert like an average football team on third down, for them to actually convert in the red zone with touchdowns, do you think this is the week the Jets offense finally puts it all together against a, a terrible defense? And if you do, how do you feel about the the score? What's your feel with the game pick for the Jets and Chargers? Yeah, I, I like the Jets a lot in this game. To me, you know, I've been running the picks column for nine years, and there's one team to me, that, well, maybe two teams. So maybe actually three, and two of them are in this game. The Jets, Chargers, and Browns are like the most wild teams to predict. You never know what's going to happen. But the Chargers, all they do is play close games. Last week was a rarity. They blew up the Bears. But they're always in these you know close games. They have Justin Herbert, who's the probably top seven quarterback, maybe better. But, you know, they have great receivers, but they're, but they're always hurt. The coach makes a bunch of weird decisions going forward and forth down in his own territory. So the Chargers are always, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. So to me, this is a great spot for the Jets. I think the Jets are the better team. They have the best team. Top five defense in the league, maybe even top three, maybe even higher than that. I mean, defense has played great. Quincy Williams has been amazing. I think uh, his brother Quinn needs to give him some of his contracts because Qu- Quincy Williams only got a three-year, $18 million deal. To me, that's the steal of the, steal of the century, the way he's playing. But uh, the Chargers, uh, like you said, their defense is not good. They're the worst um, pass defense in the league. And to me, this game, you know, as every game comes down to it in the NFL, comes down to quarterback play. It's Zach Wilson. Is he going to show up? He's been the hardest guy to predict when picking these games because every time I pick the Jets, he plays poorly. Every time I don't pick him, he outplays Patrick Mahomes. It's Sunday night. I still can't believe it. But I, I think, I think I finally figured out how to approach Zach Wilson's games. One o'clock at MetLife, pick against Zach Wilson. You saw it last week against the Giants, the Patriots games. He's always poor in the one o'clock window. But in the late games this year, he's played great. Uh, outplayed Patrick Mahomes. He had a career high 28 completions. Um, Two touchdowns, no interceptions. The first time he's ever done that in his career in close to 30 starts. Um, when, they, when they beat the Eagles, he didn't play great. But, you know, the red zone, they have – the Jets can't score once again to the red zone. They, hit too, they kick too many field goals. But he's playing, you know, turnover-free football. Um, played, played better in Denver, not great. But, again, not the Zach Wilson we've come to know from those Patriots debacles. So I feel like if he has a good game, and assuming Aaron Rodgers is going to be in the building, I feel like that helps. I think that helps uh, Wilson. Whenever he's there, he seems to play better, but not including last week. But uh, I think it's a great spot for the Jets. I think the Chargers are overrated. And I don't know why they're getting three and a half points. I mean, the spread should be closer to a pick em. If the game was in LA, the Jets would be getting close to 10 points. But you have to swing it back six points. It doesn't make any sense. So I love the Jets here. I think the defense, the best unit on the field will be the Jets' defense. I have them winning 20, 23 20. 23-20 from the picks columnist, the picks expert, Joe Maniello. Uh, Corey, how, you got a question for him? Uh, looks about, like about the uh, Zach Wilson in prime mm-hmm. time and the one 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 o'clock window. I'm I could, I could, I'm not sure if I'm tripping, but did they say either the exact opposite or something similar to that with Kirk Cousins? Well, Cousins, yeah, Cousins is really poorly is really plays poorly in the uh, prime time. Yes. Yeah, so he's like he was, so uh, Zach Wilson, basically opposite Kirk Cousins. Primetime Zach Wilson, yeah, yeah. baby. <laughs> small, small sample size, but yeah, Kirk Cousins, uh, three and ten on Monday night. They beat the Niners last week, but uh, yeah, he's usually better at one o'clock. Do you think? Do you think Aaron Rodgers is coming back? I knew this. Was, I knew you guys would ask this question. I think he is. I mean, I think Rodgers is the kind of guy like he he feeds off the uh, the doubters and the cynicism, and <laughs> you know maybe if that wasn't the case, he just like he went sheer, but. I mean, there's also specula- speculation as to how did he t- fully tear his Achilles. I mean, to be out of a walking boot that fast, it seems like no one's ever done that before. And, you know, manifestation, you know, and maybe it's we'll cool and all. It sounds great listening to Dolphins. Like, it, sounds, it sounds cool, but, like, I don't know uh, <laughs> how much of it's true and, you know, all his special doctors and healing. Maybe it's worked, but I just I feel like he's on a mission. And uh, I think the Jets are going to be there for the wild card spot. They'll be in the running late in the season. So they have a very favorable schedule. They play the Chargers. 
and if what I say is right, they win to five and three. Then they play the Raiders. That's a win. And I have the Texans and Browns. I think I have left. I have um, the Dolphins. The game after the two games with the Dolphins, including the Black Friday game. So uh, they have the Patriots again. Hopefully, they'll finally beat them. But I think you know Rogers is going to come back late in the season, uh, whether it's week sixteen or week seventeen, and that's going to be an amazing story. Oh, if that happens, then don't put the Jets <laughs> off off to the side just yet. They they're going to be competing if Aaron Rodgers is back. Once again, oh, Newsday I NFL. Oh, I mean, no, go ahead, go ahead. Still got that offensive line. It's funny because people, it's weird because like, what if Zach Wilson starts playing really well? You know, what if like Wilson goes yeah. on a run here and he's throwing three touchdowns a game, and uh, then Rodgers wants to come back? What do you do? Like, to me, you definitely start Rodgers. I don't care. If Zach uh, Wilson looks like Joe Montana. You, you still start Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. But no, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Corey park, uh, perked up in his seat when you said that Zach Wilson might go on a run. He doesn't think it's that possible, I guess. <laughs> you no, know, I don't think so either. I mean, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of his either, but he's he's had these moments in the, you know, the Kansas City game. It's such a shocker to me. I picked the Chiefs in that game minus, I think it was eight and a half or something like that. And they were down 17 nothing. And I was like, all right, game over. And all of a sudden, uh, here it comes. Once again, Newsday NFL Picks columnist Joe Maniello joining Sports Talk. Now, Joe. We have a segment on every Football Friday called WHPC Game Picks where we, uh, if you couldn't tell by the name, we pick the games of the week. <laughs> we're, hap- we're happy you're here because you get to, to join us. We got five games, five very notable games to pick this week. Great. So, w- w- what did you think about that, Joe? You, you ready? We're doing, we're doing with the spread, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, go ahead, set it up. And, uh, All right, let's get let's it. it. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> Nice music. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we all like it in the studio. We all mm-hmm. like it. Once again, WHPC Game Picks on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. A little different format today. We got five good games to pick. Miami at Kansas City. Well, can you really say at? The game's really at Frankfurt, Germany. It's mm-hmm. at 930. Chiefs is two-point favorites on a neutral site. Over, under, 51. Let's just focus on the spreads now, though. Uh, Joe, what you think about this game? Yeah, great game. One of the rare games where you, you want to set your alarm, make sure you get up early and watch this game, 9.30 a.m. Um, I like the Chiefs in this game. I think it's going to be a great game. It's a Tyreek, Tyreek Hill Bowl. Yes. Um, he's going to get his, but uh, I like the Chiefs, 30-27 kind of game. Mahomes, he's only lost back-to-back games twice, uh, three times in six seasons. And uh, his numbers after a loss are great. I think 14-3 or something like that. So uh, only giving two and a half, so... If win by one or two, so be it. But I, I like the Chiefs to bounce back here. Their defense, by the way, has just been great. No one talks about it enough. I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm going with Miami. I feel as though they have the weapons, and then you still have you have Jalen, you have you have Jalen Ramsey, and you have Xavier Howard coming back. So you have two lockdown cornerbacks on the outside. Uh, so and then it leaves Patrick with that option of uh, Travis Kelsey. But I feel as though when you have Jalen Waddle and Tariq Hill, who's probably one of, who should be up for MVP this year. I feel as though the Miami Dolphins have the shot of winning. All right. Devin? And it's going over. I'm going to go with revenge. <laughs> I'm going to go Miami. It's Tyreek Hill's revenge game. He's going to go off. I just traded for him in fantasy, so he's going to go off this week against Kansas City. I just think Miami has the better weapons than Kansas City in this game. I'm going to take I'm going to take, take Kansas City to uh, cover, though. All right. Miami has had sort of a bad, like, uh, patty cake schedule. Um, when they play against top teams that like the Eagles and the Bills, um, they lose. Yep. I feel like they're going to come out, play Kansas City, see a real quarterback again, and lose. Oof. All right. Two on the Chiefs. Joe and Eric, two on. Who picked, who picked Kansas City, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he said what I was going to say, too, but I didn't want to talk too much. Yeah, exactly. Miami <laughs> hasn't played well against the uh, Super Bowl contenders, so great point, Eric. I think I'll go with. Kansas City, I, I agree. Miami, I, I love their offense. I love everything they're doing. They might revolutionize offense in the NFL. We'll see. They're on a historic pace, but Kansas City, their defense is better. Their trench play is better, and their quarterback is better. Give me Kansas City for the first game to kick off Week 9 on Sunday. Moving on to 1 o'clock, though. This is interesting. The Seattle Seahawks are 5-2. and two. They're at the 6-2 and two Baltimore Ravens. Both teams is red hot. Baltimore six point favorites at home. Joe, what you think? Oh, well, lines up to six. That was five and a half. Uh, yeah, I like the Ravens. Uh, spreads a little bit higher than than you like, but you saw what they did against the Lions before the season. Chiefs Lions was my Super Bowl pick, and uh, Lamar Jackson was my MVP pick. And the way he's playing that offense, 
Um, Seattle, I also had winning the NFC West, so I'm high on them too. But they're a weird team. Like they they have a bunch of good players, but they're not like a they don't look like a great team. You know, they they were lucky to beat the Browns last week, and uh, I just think the Ravens are a complete team, offense and defense. I think their defenses might be ranked number one now, and the way Lamar's playing, uh, I'll lay the six points. But I think it's going to be a close game, back and forth kind of game, maybe like a 30-23 kind of game. So I'll, I'll, I think the Ravens win by a touchdown. So I'll lay by seven. So I'll, I'll lay the six. Definitely going to be an interesting game. Eric, what you got? I'm going to take Baltimore in this game. Uh, of course, the way he uh, explained how <laughs> they played against the Lions. The Lions yeah. are top four team in the NFC. So is so Seattle. I, they're going to embarrass them. I truly think Ooh. they're going to embarrass him because Joe, Geno Smith didn't even play that well last week. No, he didn't. Through two interceptions. Corey. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens oh, just, shocker. just for one reason, and it comes down to the quarterback. I trust I trust Lamar more than I trust Geno. Because I, I feel as though Seattle, I feel like Seattle has a better defense and better weapons than Baltimore. But I just feel like the quarterback is the one thing that separates the two. Devin? Yes, Leonard Williams was traded to Seattle, but I do. I just think that uh, Baltimore, what they did against uh, the Lions defense, I'm taking Baltimore all the way. So we're all on Baltimore, okay? But Seattle's going to cover. So I'm, I'm on Baltimore now. I'm, I'm taking the six points. If we're all on Baltimore, Seattle's winning. <laughs> Yo, you're going to say you're going to go against the expert? <laughs> no, no, no. You know how when you see those, you know how you see those situations where everybody picks one team and then. All of a well, sudden, two of you guys picked Seattle, so with the spread, two of you picked Seattle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus, we're not so. the ESPN shows. We know what we're talking about over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, I, I want to actually uh, sixteen and one against the NFC too, or something like that. Seventeen and one. Oh yeah, the, the Lamar Jackson does not lose against the NFC. That's a fact. Seventeen and one. Yeah, that's a number. Something like that. Sixteen. Yeah. yeah. Four twenty-five. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys is five and two. The Philadelphia Eagles is seven and one. Every single time these teams play, it's a bloodbath, dogfight. We got a Cowboys fan in the house. <clears throat> but before we get to Eric, Joe, what you think about Cowboys at Eagles? Eagles, yeah, I have be, them at three point favorites. Yeah, it should be a great game. I mean, the safe, the safe pick is the Eagles. Uh, even though they haven't looked at the Super last year, they they still they're still seven and one. They're still finding ways to win. So the safe play is the Eagles. I'm going on the hunt here. I think the Cowboys are going to show up in this game. Last time they had a big game, they got. Embarrassed Sunday Night Football a few weeks ago in San Francisco, 42-10. Since then, they beat the Chargers barely on Monday night, and then last week uh, crushed the Rams. Dallas has been a better a better home team, so this is a tough challenge on the road. But I'm going with the Cowboys here. I think they're going to win the game outright. Eric, what you got to follow that up? We always play Philly tough. You yep. look at the history behind us. It's never a slouch. Even with Cooper Rush, we didn't give up. <laughs> but obviously. <laughs> We didn't play Jalen uh, Hurts last year when Dak was in. So you don't really know how this matchup is going to go. So this is a new look. But what I will say is I think my defense is coming different. I think they're going to show up and show out. I don't think they're going to stop Jalen Hurts. I don't, you know, but they're going to limit him. Okay. I got us winning in a close game. All right. You know what? I'll go next. I got the Cowboys as well. Ooh, I, yeah, I know, right? The Eagles, they're 7-1. and one. Yeah, they're the best record in the NFL, but they have not looked impressive throughout the season. They've won a lot of, you know, nasty games. They beat the Commanders by a combined six points, I believe. Six or ten points. It's not what you want. Ten points. Yeah. Ten okay. points. It's not what you want. They lost to the Jets in just a game they never should have lost. Jalen Hurts is leading the league in turnovers or at least tied for it. Nah, Give me the gotta, Cowboys. They got to be Josh Allen. They no. got to be Josh Allen. I mean... We'll get our research team on it, Corey. I don't, I don't know. What you think about this game? You gonna pick your precious Eagles? You know what team I'm going with. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. What? <laughs> no, right, bet see. the Eagles, everyone. Bet the Eagles. He's trying. He's, he's trying to do reverse psychology on us. Yeah, okay. Joe. Uh, go, just just okay. to give you some information on Corey, he is a Giants fan that wore a Kelly Green Eagles jersey to last week's show. I had to get my yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah, I got yeah, an outfit yeah. on. No, I nobody does on. that. Nobody does he's that. Really Green Eagles is though, unbelievable. It's a beautiful jersey. I got an outfit on. It was a, it was a Randall Cunningham jersey. It wasn't a current player. Yeah, so, but if you're a Giants fan, you can't wear that. See, exactly. I had to get a. I had to fit. You never perfect, seen me I never wear. I had the perfect fit. You never seen one of us wear that. I told you, you could have got a Phil Simms jersey. <laughs> <laughs> if I still had my, if I would have still had my Victor Cruz sneakers, I definitely would have. I definitely would have got. I definitely would have wore my 56 Lawrence Taylor jersey. Thank you for defending your fit, but let's get to Devin's pick. 
<laughs> Being a Cowboys fan, obviously, I think I have to definitely go with the uh, Cowboys. Yes, we looked very uh, bad against the 49ers just a few weeks ago, but obviously beat the Chargers, beat the Rams, absolutely crushed them. Uh, I just think our defense is it's going to come up clutch. Uh, like Eric said, we're going to. I think we're not going to be able to stop Jalen Hurts from scoring 25, 30 points. But I think we're going to be able to, like you said, limit him and keep him in check. And I honestly, I think we're going to we're going to win. I just want to just point out that I, the reason why I think that the, the Dallas Cowboys are going to win just because of the fact that. The, the Phillies defense in the secondary doesn't seem that strong, and I feel like a C.D. Lamb can take advantage of that. And if um, Michael Will- Parsons could apply pressure, I feel like the, I feel as though with the Jets, like how the Jets did, you open up your chances to f- to get those type of turnovers because their secondary, um, the Dallas Cowboys secondary, flies around. If Sam Howell can look like he did against the Eagles in both of those games, going overtime and going late into the fourth quarter, then I think our Cowboys can do pretty well against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, you said it, our Cowboys. We just gave him the kiss of death. You just, get, you just did it. All right, so we all like the Cowboys pretty much. I'm surprised by that. But the Eagles, once again, are three-point favorites. We'll see how they do. Last game, Sunday Night Football. Bills, Bengals. Bengals, two-point favorites. Both teams is you no know, contenders, but they're both garbage against the spread. The Bills are two and six against the spread. Bengals are three and four. With that being said, Joe, who do you like? Yeah, the Bengals, Bengals are actually my best bet of the week. Uh, okay. I, the way they played against the Niners last week, uh, the week after the bye, Joe Burrow looks 100% healthy. They were 0-2 and 1-3 all because of his uh, his calf. But now they're firing on all cylinders. I don't see uh, a Buffalo Bills team that's down key defenders with Tredavious White and Matt Milano out there. Uh, to me, the Bills are a little overrated. I mean, Josh Allen's great and all, but I don't know. The defense took some big hits, and uh, I don't see them stopping the Bengals right now. The Bengals, to me, look like... Uh, they're going to go on a run here. I actually wrote in this week's column. They're uh, a great future bet. Bengals seventeen to one to win the Super Bowl. Oh wow! They were ten to ten to one before the year, so the odds went down because of the bad start. But uh, even if they don't win the division, you know they play Baltimore in two weeks. To, not next Thursday night, the week after. But uh, I mean, they still win the division. But even if they get in as a wild card, I mean, the way Burrow's playing, they'll be a tough out in January. So they beat Buffalo last year, twenty-seven ten in the playoffs. Uh, we all know what happened on that Monday night game with Demar Hamlin. That game didn't uh, wasn't finished, but that game started with them going right down the field and scoring. I think they were up seven nothing before the uh, awful injury there. But um, I I just feel like the Bengals are unstoppable. They look like an unstoppable team right now. They dominated the 49ers, 31-17, and it didn't feel like to feel that close. So I don't see the Bills defense having an answer. So I like the Bengals by uh, you know, th- like a 31-24 kind of game. Bengals 17 to one to win the Super Bowl. I might have to hop on Fanduel real quick. There we go, <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Who we got? I don't think that spread is big enough. I think Cincinnati is going to blow it open. Like Joe said, the Bills are missing key defenders. And you can you can literally score on this team at any will. So I think the Bengals are going to really open this one up, and I think it's going to be a blowout. Corey. I'm going Say with- focus, man. Bills and Bengals, bro. <laughs> I'm always focused, but I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. I feel, as those Josh, I feel like Josh Allen's... His reputation for the season because he hasn't been living up to the hype as many people would peg him, especially that Madden curse starting to look real. <laughs> He's lost a couple. He lost. He, Josh, I said Josh Allen, right? No, you said Josh Allen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making sure. You said something else. No, so. continue, continue, please, please. Uh, nothing, that, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> He's been uh, very turnover uh, prone lately. Um, I just feel as though that That's team. Why you're picking them? I feel, yeah, I'm, I'm picking him because he has a rep. He's got to live up to something. He's got to break, basically bring his reputation back. Like he's got to be. No, bring he's got to prove himself. Yes, Corey with the. I think he got that dog in him, but I think he. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how that works out. Devin, who we got? Um, in Cincinnati, Buffalo just straight for a defensive back. Don't matter. I think, uh, like like Joe said, not just any defensive defensive back. Nassau Community College's okay. own Razul <laughs> Douglas. Come on yes. now. Yeah, so they try for a result. I'm not going to slander an NCC alum. You got that. You got that one off. <laughs> but don't do it. That don't matter because Cincinnati is back. And it, the Cincinnati, they don't look great in the beginning of the season. But Joe, like Joe said, Joe Burrow is healthy. Jamar Chase is getting his targets. He's open. The ball's getting to him finally. Joe, Jamar Chase is going to go off. Cincinnati wins. I'm on Cincinnati too. I think we, we all agree with the... The Newsday NFL Picks columnist Joe Maniello once again, as that'll do it for WHBC Game Picks today. Once again, Joe, we can't thank you enough for joining the show today, man. 
Appreciate it. All right, guys. It was a lot, of, a lot of fun. Thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. You, thank you. There you have it. We got a minute or so left in the show. Let's get to some buzzer beaters, quick hitters, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> he had a quote that if it wasn't made by him, I would have been like, oh, he got a, that's a bar. I'm not a system player. I'm the system. No, you're not. <laughs> no. From James not anymore. Harden. Not anymore, at least. Now, can no. you say that after it's your fourth team in, in two calendar years? That's crazy. He's starting to become Celtic Shaq. He's on his way. <laughs> he's on his like, way. Like sure. now he's in that Phoenix phase. When Shaq was in Phoenix, he, he's like right there. Hey, man, not looking great, but I mean, for him and the Sixers, although I don't know. Sixers is winning games. Nick Nurse is really turning that thing around. We'll see how James Harden does in his Clipper debut. Guess where he's making his Clippers debut? Just guess. Um, Thank Houston? God, I'm baby. San Antonio? The Garden. Dude, it's written on the paper. <laughs> the gar- of course. Where else? Where else? Oh, the light shine bright. He's coming in and he's <laughs> dropping 50 in a debut. You just oh, know it. You just God. know it. He, he's a funny guy, man. He's a funny guy. Uh, lastly, I did want to get to uh, the Mets. Now, the World Series wrapped up the other day. Shout out to the Rangers. But there was a, a graphic that ESPN posted of it was it was congratulating DeGrom and Scherzer saying, oh, and they had a, a Mets uh, mascot, Mr. Met, with a frown on his face. So if you go on somewhere, there's not an anti-Mets agenda out here. Don't forget Janikowski. <laughs> right. <laughs> they just love to, yo, the show, boing, boing, slurp up of the Mets is crazy. I can't believe it. That's crazy. How, who cares about the Rangers won the World Series? Why is anybody thinking about the Mets? Mm. Well, they just did, you they know did what just announced mouth, that, uh, They did just announce that Craig Council wants, in quote, a big contract. Hey, and who better to give it to him than Steve Cohen? Mm-hmm. we going to see. Oh, yeah. That'll do it for Sports Talk on a Football Friday. Thank you once again on behalf of Devin O'Shea, Corey David, and Eric Williams as well as myself, Joshua Mahi, for listening to Sports Talk on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.